Well, we're very excited. The next segment we want to talk about as far as your brand new book that's just been released. It is titled Life is a Mindset. You don't have to be born rich to be wildly successful. And always as a courtesy when we do book reviews on our radio show, uh, I always want to know what is the inspiration behind this book? What led you uh, to come to this decision to write this book? Well, I think it's, you know, a lot of people have ideas or they can do things well, but they don't know how to, how to make money at it or how to be successful with those sorts of things. And I was very fortunate because my dad always taught me from a very young age that, that life is a mindset, that uh, life is what you make of it. And if you have a positive approach, you have a different a different way of life than if you have a negative approach. And uh, you know, Yoda was something he'd point to and say, you know, and return in Empire Strikes Back. Um, oh, now you you're know. talking my son's language. He loves that. <laughs> so uh, between my dad and Yoda, <laughs> I, I start the book with the line that the older I get, the smarter my parents yes. get. And, and it's exactly that because my dad would tell me things as I was growing up, and sometimes, oh, he's old. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Then as I got older, I realized, God, everything he ever told me was exactly right. Uh, and so my dad always worked for himself. He owned a chain of, of retail stores when I was growing up, book books and teacher supplies. And um, then he became a financial manager and uh, had clients that, you know, he did financial uh, investing and that sort of thing. And, but he always did it his own way and did it for himself. And it taught me that um, you don't always have to be under someone else's thumb. You don't always have to be clocking in at eight and clocking out at six or whatever, sacrificing family, sacrificing just life in general to doing something you don't like. So many people do things that they don't like to do because it's for the money. Uh, just Okay, but what if you could do something you like to do and make money doing it? Mm -hmm. And so uh, my partner, Amal Shaw, who we co-authored the book, um, he was talking about this read philosophy. If you're relentless, enthusiastic, ambitious, and disciplined, you can accomplish anything. And I thought that that's, summarizes what my dad has always taught me. Set your sights on a goal, don't take no for an answer, and work harder than everybody else to get it. And that's ultimately how Hoops World went from being two of us starting a little NBA website to being part of USA Today Sports is because we saw the way the NBA was being covered and we thought this can be done better and we're going to work every day to do it better uh, and we're going to eventually, you know, understanding that eventually that would pay off and eventually it did. So it took a while. Um, you know, I tell people, people are like, oh, you get to work with the NBA, like, well, it's not like somebody just handed us the, the keys to the website and said, go. We had to work um, tirelessly. We had to be relentless, enthusiastic, ambitious, and disciplined. We had to, you know, we we're both working other jobs. My partner was a, a TI guy, and I was teaching during the day and doing games at night and getting three or four hours of sleep most of the time just to continue pushing Hoops World forward to get to the point where we are, um, to where USA Today wanted to, to make us a part of their company. So. And Bill, it really was an amazing journey. It took 10 years to get to what to this level. And one of the stories that I want you to share too that you talk about in the book is uh, you were just highlighting as far as your relationship with your dad. He's been such a guiding influence and force throughout your life. But uh, when you brought him here to the AAC and you took him center court, I mean, it's very special. When we got our first big check um, to where I could retire from teaching and just focus on covering the NBA, my dad came in and I had him, you know, we do a lot of video with players and stuff and I always have someone shooting video for me and I was like, just come, you know, come down and shoot video for me and let him kind of see what we do, go in the locker room and, and see, like he, he met Shaquille O'Neal one time and that was something he told people. He's not a big sports guy, but he's like, everybody knows who Shaquille O'Neal is. So he, he'll tell people, this is my son, he introduced me to Shaquille O'Neal, you know, but uh, I took him down to midcourt. And as you know, having a credential that gives you access to, the, to midcourt is, is a, a very, it's very rare air down there. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I took him and I, we stood on there and I said, I want, I want you to know the reason that we are standing here right now is because of you. Mm. Because you taught me when, when other people would say, oh, you should just take the safe route, get a nice job with benefits, uh, you know, retire at 65 and all that. My dad said, well, if that's what you want to do, that's fine, but I know you and that's not what you want to do. What you really want to do is, you know, write and, and do these things. And, and he said, so if you want to settle, for, the, for choosing something you don't really like doing just so you have the job and the security, blah, 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 which there's no security really anymore. But uh, he said, I'll support you in doing that, but you should chase your dreams. You should decide exactly what you wanna do and chase it until you're successful because with the kind of determination that you have, you will be successful in anything you do. And on the days where I felt like I could not, you know, getting up at six and going to teaching all day and then have a couple hours to eat and maybe get a run in and then come back down to the arena. And there were days where, you know, through 10 years, there were a lot of times I was like, man, I just don't, <laughs> I don't know how much longer I can do this. And he would say, 
Look at all the progress you've made. Now you're, this has happened, that's happened, this has happened, this has happened. You know, you guys are credentialed for the All-Star Game now, which used to be a big deal. Now it seems like they let everybody in there. They, people go in there asking about comic book characters and stuff. But when we first got credentialed for the All-Star Game, it was very, very hard to get those credentials. And so he would point out the, um, the milestones to me and encourage me and say, keep going, look at, look at how far you've come keep going and, and so we would keep going and obviously it paid off. Well and I was going to say you know when you're going through that journey you're taking that, a difficult path you're always going to have as you talked about in the book that white noise and you're going to have the naysayers and the critics and they're like what are you doing they really don't understand uh, where you're trying to go with your dream and it sounds like your father was the one that encouraged you the entire way and continues to do so. He was and he continues to be the the brightest spot I mean you know when I talk about my best friend I have I have several best friends mm -hmm. But my dad is the one who has always been there. He's, the, he's that person I can just tell anything to whatever is going through my head, whatever crazy idea, and, and he never judges. He's always very supportive. Um, you know, even stupid stuff, I can tell him, man, I did this stupid thing. He'd be like, oh, that's too bad. But you know, <laughs> here's what you learn from that. You know, he's always got a positive spin for things. And, and uh, so, yeah, he, he's been, um, I really do when, when I think about the success that I've had and, and what my mindset is for my life. It's so much because of the things that he taught me growing up and the way that he's continued to support me to this day. So what was that day like and when you got that phone call or it was the email in terms of Hoops World teaming up with USA Today? That was powerful. It was. Um, the first one was uh, when we, in 2004, we teamed up with a new company that was looking to build a four sport kind of thing and we were the first one they wanted to acquire mm -hmm. and so i got a check that allowed me to buy a house <laughs> so that was the that was the big one um going and, and and i didn't pay the entire house off but making a huge down payment on the house and sticking a bunch of money in savings and uh, that sort of thing that was that was a big moment that that was the big payoff moment now, USA Today, it's more of a not i guess a notoriety thing more than you know uh, the sports industry is kind of no one's really sure what to do with it. Even Mark Cuban will tell you, how do you monetize the internet? I don't really know. He's got some interesting ideas, but even Mr. Entrepreneur isn't exactly sure how to do it. So we're still waiting to see what USA Today is going to, uh, what we're going to do with them. But that first, the first one where, you know, it was like, here come, you're going to fly to New York and we're going to sign contracts and here's a check and you're going to go. That was, uh, you know, there were a lot of people that I didn't then call people and say, see, but there were people in my mind that I thought, I'm just going to, Put this out there and let not not in a nanny -na, -na, na kind of way but just in a oh by the way guess what happened at work today <laughs> um and it was it was great it was really good of course the title of bill ingram's book it is life is a mindset you don't have to be born rich to be wildly successful and tell all of our listeners and our viewers where they can go and get a copy of this well it's on amazon.com and you just look up the title life is a mindset and uh, i want to emphasize something that sure. you know the book is not super thick. You Four might pages, might actually pages, yes. read this. Uh, our goal in writing the book was to write something that if I handed it to a high school student, which we go and speak to high school students, we go and we speak to college uh, athletes, we speak to pro athletes. Um, if I hand them this book, uh, in fact, one AT&T executive, when we met with them a couple weeks ago, said, wow, I might actually read, thank you, I might actually read this book. I've been in all these seminars where I get 300 page books and I'm never going to read those. When I retire, they'll be in boxes and shipped to my attic or whatever and the idea is to give you something that you can actually use right away what does it mean to be relentless it's one thing to say hey be relentless what does that mean we break it down in very clear terms and I use both references from our journey with Hoops World to um, famous people uh, people like I, I like to use fictitious people because I'm big into movies so Marty McFly oh, yes, who could is. play guitar but oh I just don't know if I should but went back and had a chance to rework things and and then had the ability to be successful um, Clint Eastwood, who never wanted to be an actor, but was discovered uh, on when a when Wagon Train was filming an episode at a at a fort in Southern California where he was a lifeguard and said, "Hey, that guy looks he should be an extra for us." Now he's a cultural icon. Uh, Oprah Winfrey, who mm -hmm. had an idea when she was dirt poor, living in the sticks of Mississippi, that she might want to do a little radio. Now she's Oprah Winfrey. What else needs to be said? J.K. Rowling, who obviously the Harry Potter books, living on, living on the British equivalent of welfare. Um, you talk about uh, all these people who had nothing. All the examples that we use in our book, Kobe Bryant, people who didn't start from a position of having an advantage. They started from nothing. And the only way they were successful was through their own, their ability to be relentless, enthusiastic, ambitious, and disciplined. And so this is about what does it mean to be those things? And then you go to our website, 
which is back in the game 247.com and we've got some videos on there that you can even get additional stuff and then we can come and you know people that like to buy our book we like to come talk to the people that are reading it so um, that's uh, we're very excited about giving people hope giving people to me it's it's pay it forward because my dad was so supportive of me and helped me to do things and see things that most people don't like how would you go about oh I want to start a website that's going to later be we're going to be the best thing covering the NBA wow how do you do that you focus on day by day what you're doing today and then tomorrow worry about tomorrow if you start thinking about the big picture you'll get lost but step by step how can you be successful in whatever field you're looking to do this book is about step by step really uh, learning to take things take one step at a time to be successful one step at a time and then always have the next goal in mind between the book between the website and then we'd love to come talk to you um, we feel like we have a program that if you really genuinely want to be successful in a field whatever your field is even if it's the NBA um, we can help you do that. It's so neat to hear you talk about your relationship with your father, but I must share that uh, you are one proud daddy too. You have a daughter, Riley. Is she two now? She will be two uh, June 24th. Oh, She it... waited till the finals were over here in Dallas uh -huh. to be born, which I appreciated because obviously uh, we were I remember very that. excited about yes. that. And then right after the finals ended, it was draft night and she, and then she came like, Perfect. Uh, like Faith Hill sings, a baby changes everything. Yeah. It's always wonderful to be a parent. And I will tell you, I was reading your book. Uh, I was actually going through it again on the golf course. And our oldest son, Stephen, picked it up. He looked on the back and he said, Mommy, is that Kurt Warner? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how many times I went to college in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And Kurt Warner was the quarterback of the Rams uh, at that time. And I don't know how many times people would walk up and ask me for an autograph. <laughs> I was like, especially because I had like Rams uh, polos. You know, I'd be wearing something that said Rams on it. And, and just as a fan of the, of the team and mostly a fan of Kurt Warner. Um, and I could ask for an autograph and I'd be like, I'm not who you think I am, but uh, there is a strike. I'm a little taller than he is, but there is a very, it is a striking resemblance. It was a great <laughs> moment. Well, listen, congratulations on all of your success. Thank you very and much. And you can check out this exclusive interview at eradiosports.com. We will see you again real soon.